I just wrote up a post. And uh, I just wanted to give a quick introduction, just basically what we're doing. Has everyone heard of Barcamp? Yes. Okay. So Barcamp is an on conference. And the best short description I have of it, it's like open source, geek culture, DIY, tech, software programmers, and Maker Faire all jammed together. And so March 30th, Friday night, they have a social gathering from 6.30, 6 30 to 9. And then the next day, the morning session, they create the conference. And then it goes through the rest of the day. So uh, I've been working with the Portland Indie Game Squad, which is a really amazing game development community of artists and educators and scholars and programmers and also enthusiasts um, to basically do a game showcase on indie development. And so what we're first going to do is that uh, many of the games are coming from the recent Global Game Jam. And uh, so there's one, for example, on uh, Shaving Beards, which is, I think, perfect for Portland, uh, where it gives you uh, like a Frank Zappa and shows, shows you an image of a Frank Zappa and then you have to shave the beard to get the Frank Zappa within time. Um, Another really nice one, which we're really lucky to have because it's not been released yet um, on Sony yet, it's, it's coming out soon, is called Joust, which is a graphicless game. Um, and it uses the Sony Move controllers uh, to create basically a symphonic, I'm going to turn this up, to create a symphonic choreographed game. So one of our developers from PixQuad has the game, and we're going to have that set up as well so that people can explore this new interface around game controllers that are finally breaking us away from just thinking about the screen as the interface. Um, we are going to have to make sure that people aren't drinking too much when they try to play this. <laughs> Hi, do you need a signature? I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, it's a short video, so I'm just going to keep talking through this if you don't mind. Uh, the other component that we're doing is that we really, uh, we have this opportunity around Kickstarter, around crowdfunding basically. And Double Fine just reached $2 million on their video game where they asked for $400,000. Uh, Order of the Stick, which is a book series, uh, kind of reached a $1 million. Wow. Well. Um, there's about 150 video games, not including games, because board games are about 50%, just video games. There are about 150 50 successfully funded games, and most of them have reached $30,000 plus. So for an indie community, that amount of cash infusion for a small project is massive, and most of the large-scale publishers are not seeing the Kickstarter as threatening, because even $2 million for a video game is nothing. Um, the other really nice thing that we're going to be using this showcase for, oh, so another game is called Pew Pew Pew, um, where it's sound controllers, and you play the game by going Pew 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 Pew. pew. Um, out of those, out of that demo, uh, Pig Squad is going to facilitate a mini talk and conversation about jams and what jams are structured as, and that they're basically artificial simulations of a development process. So what are strategies for doing that when you have 48 hours to work from a common prompt? Um, and also being able to think about how jams are kind of great practice that can be portable to other kinds of contexts and other mm -hmm. kinds of, of ventures to promote innovation. Um, what I'm working on particularly is producing a bunch of infographics from people on the web about video games and producing a showcase on Kickstarter just to look at that one funding platform, showing some of the successful games, and then us doing a social game where we select about 10, uh, where we have about 10 current projects that are seeking funding, and we play a preference game using stickers. So I'm going to throw in a pop, and then people can get free stickers, and then if you want to buy in to support the project, you get more stickers. And maybe we'll, we'll do stuff with like some of the stickers being really cute and colorful, and others are boosters or something like that but very much a preference game, so it can't be turned into a kind of uh, someone wins because we just hate something. 
It's really about tapping the crowd wisdom. And then out of that, we're going to do a jam on what are best practices for Kickstarter or crowdfunding projects so that we can help developers prototype their projects. And then my end goal is maybe we can do a local Kickstarter community and start really self-organizing around promoting stuff coming out of Portland mm -hmm. um, or allied projects. So I've been supporting some projects, um, podcasts, some video game projects, <coughs> where basically I've been able to um, get them to come, agree to come into Portland. So rather than us looking for rewards like t-shirts or a copy of the game, if we collectively, collaboratively crowdsource around particular projects, then we can really ask for higher value things mm -hmm. and maybe start bringing in other kinds of skill sharing and knowledge sharing from people who normally just wouldn't make themselves accessible that way. So the information for Bar Camp is online. It's, it's Portland Bar Camp. Can I ask, I've yes. heard about Bar Camp, but I've never understood like the specific theme, like like where camp is clear because yes. like it's about you know, anything geospatial. Right. So the bar camp is radically open, my okay. understanding is. Someone can come in and go, I want to do a section on knitting. Really? And if you can find enough people jazzed about talking about knitting, they'll put it up on the board. Mm -hmm. So it's everyone's putting up their ideas, and then the crowd goes through and starts to show what actually draws their attention and interest. Mm -hmm. And then those get blocked in on the time slots. What are people usually drawn to the event around? I'm going to... Because, I mean, the crowd's already self-selecting. Yes. So. Um, I've never been to bar camp. Okay. I've been to a couple of on-conferences. Um, so this is their website, and perhaps you have a okay. passion for textiles, storytelling, entrepreneurship, raising chickens. Okay, yeah. totally. Yeah. I could totally see that. Gray water, I'm sure. <laughs> right? I want to talk about gray water. That would yeah. work really well. Um, definitely, though, there's a tech programming um, dev community in there. I, I think that's pretty clear. Part of what I had approached them about is building bridges of accessibility. So they're kind of excited about the event because it's, it may be pulling in some other communities that typically haven't arrived at our camp. Because you're having, you're structuring events around games. We're right, on the social night. So it's a nice little prompt for people who might be feeling a little socially awkward. Mm -hmm. And then we can also turn it into... Which is like everyone in Portland. <laughs> you know, I want to go, but... <laughs> um, and so, yeah, uh, we're going to be setting out media about it in the, in the next coming weeks. Um, and I just want to actually cool. just test them. Per and I do have a direct request, which is that if, if you are ever scanning Kickstarter or a fan of Kickstarter and you see a project that you think is really interesting, please email me. Mm -hmm. um, and well, I, it's just Jeffrey Sends at Gmail, but mm -hmm. it's on the, I think it's on the membership papers. Mm -hmm. Because we still have to pick which games to play around the preference game, which mm -hmm. ones to play that around. So I'm going to have to get them printed out really big so that people can read the campaigns and mark them up and, and mm -hmm. for us to kind of go, oh, this is terrible. Um, and people can make flowers and different patterns around stuff. And the Kickstarter projects need to be video games or no, anything? No, uh, the two criteria I've said, either thematically, let's keep them games, mm -hmm. so games broadly. For the ones you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, or Portland-based, or Oregon-based. Or Portland-based, right. Okay. Okay. So even if it wasn't game-based? Even if it wasn't game-based, if it could somehow connect us to local entrepreneurship or regional entrepreneurship, I think that's really important. Okay. Yeah. My partner just finished a Kickstarter. Really? It was really successful. Yeah, nice. they were going for 6000 for basically a balloon kit yeah. for aerial mapping. So you buy this $85 um, kit and then, and no one was like, maybe 10 people like balloon right. mapping. But they got 300 people yeah. to buy a kit. So they raised like 35 k <laughs> which was really exciting. Please allow me to follow up with yeah. you to make a direct invitation because that's, we want to have a really beautiful cross knowledge. Yeah. Around. And there are a number of other platforms. Indiegogo is one. Yeah. Eight bit funding is really still struggling. Mm -hmm. um, I just found out about one based in Hong Kong that's producing three D desktop three D printers for mm -hmm. under five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Um, which is amazing to already have that in that. I think the lowest price do it yourself one, where you have to construct it yourself, is about twelve hundred. So they're selling the ones where you put it together yourself for 300. Mm -hmm. um, 
and higher reliability, better product, better uh, quality production. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to take up too much of the lightning talk time, but thanks okay. so much for the mm -hmm. yeah, just engagement and and uh, delight of seeing your faces watch this stuff and go like, okay, that was a good video to show. All right. Yeah. <laughs>